What's going on guys? This is Michael from GPRisers.com and today I thought I'd make a video for you guys on a little bit about our 10 giga hash Ethereum mining farm. Now the first thing I'm going to talk about is of course the earnings, the revenue, the cost of electric and everything like that maintaining a 10 giga hash mining farm. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the common issues that we have, a little bit of the must-haves that we think that you need at a you know scale this size. Then I'll talk a little bit about keeping track of everything and of course our future plans on expansion. So to start off with earnings right off the bat here you can see Miner Stats dashboard. We run our entire farm exclusively on MinerStat OS. And here you can see our daily, weekly, and monthly earnings. And now this does fluctuate daily. Uh, fluctuates actually, um, you know, sometimes minute by minute. Um, but it kind of is always plus or minus 5% of what you get. Now here you can see it's 0.135 Ethereum per day. And I can confirm that because we do get paid out once a day. So I am going to be using these numbers. And so right here you can see the power consumption, which is 24 kilowatts. And and that is 24,000 watts running continuous. However, this number is not completely accurate. Um, you know, AMD cards are not that accurate. This does not include system idle. So I ran the numbers prior to the video. I didn't want to bore you guys with it. Uh, we are going to be adding about 25, 2600 watts to this to be able to accurately calculate the electrical costs. So to do that, let's jump over to what to mine. Now I've pre-filled this here. You can see 10,600 mega hash at 26,500 watts watts. Now we do get about 0 0.086 uh, cents per kilowatt, but I did round it up to 9 cents. And here you can see the numbers. This says 239.22. And if we switch back to the dashboard, you can see that that's fairly close. Now, if you subtract 181.98 uh, from the gross, which is 239.22, that gives us a total cost every day of $57.24 for electricity. So I kind of wanted to jump right into that. Um, I know a lot of people um, will wait till the end of the video or something to talk about profitability, but I wanted to throw that right in the front. So our mining farm does generate around $181.98 cents per day. Now that said in our mining farm if we switch back over here and go over to our workers actually no we'll go over to let's I guess statistics we'll check out the global statistics of our mining farm. Here you can see we have 191 active workers. After electricity it kind of is close to around a dollar a day per card on average. Now we do have anything ranging from you know 6600s uh, 6600 XTs all the way up to you know 3090 Ti's um, we only have one of those but we do have quite a lot of 3090s uh, 3080s so we have a broad range I will get into that um, towards the end of the video but I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the issues that we do encounter while managing a farm this size now the first thing that we run into are rigs that um, you know go down that have issues that need reboots that is pretty standard among all of them you can see here we have about 24 we have one that is not on right now, which is our 6800 XT rig. So this rig we don't have on right now. Um, it was we, the reason why we had it off was a power issue um, with the PDU that this one was connected to. However, that's not an issue anymore. So we really should turn that one on. And especially with the newer cards that we have, like the uh, 3060 Ti LHRs with the unlock, um, a lot of these cards require random reboots. Hash rates will drop. Um, the 100% uh, unlock for LHR cards is not perfect right now. And that kind of leads into the next common issue. And I don't know if it's an issue rather than just a maintenance, um, you know, kind of perspective, but it's with all these new things coming out, it's very hard to keep track of everything. We had the LHR unlock. We had the R mode with um, AMD cards, uh, new miners switching between NB or, you know, T-Rex, all these different, you know, I think LOL miner as well. Uh, trying to switch between all of these and figuring out which one's best for each rig does take quite a lot of time. Now, as you can see here on the screen, we are only mining Ethereum. Now, we do switch to other algorithms when we're doing tests with new cards or, you know, things like that. But at the end of the day, we do mine, um, for the most part, what's most profitable. Now, Ethereum is not always the most profitable, especially with, you know, different altcoins with the TI cards and everything like that. But again, that does take a lot of time to switch between everything and, and calculate it out. Now, Minerstat does have a profit switch um, add-on or automation setting that they have, which is really nice. However, we just have not set that up. We do need to switch over to two miners. I will do a video on that sometime soon. 
And what is nice with two miners when it comes to profitability switching is that you can run, you know, Ergo, Ethereum, you know, all these different algorithms and get paid out just in Bitcoin. And that is the main reason why we keep everything on Ethereum right now. And we don't do profit switching or just have some rigs that are, that are always more profitable on Ergo or Firo or Flux or whatever it may be is because we don't want to get paid out in all coins that we can't cash out to cover our fixed and variable costs of running this mining farm. So another common issue that we have um, with everything is thermal throttling and heat extraction. Now, if you guys have seen my interesting experience with the heat box and everything that we're doing here, you guys know that there are tons of heat issues with mining. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heat boxes, have different ways to get the heat out and cool air in. That is a major problem here in the mining bunker as well, trying to, you know, control that. So that is another issue that we do have here in the mining bunker. And lastly, a common issue is um, just things going bad. So things go bad over time, whether it be, you know, a riser, whether it be a power supply, a graphics card, fans on a graphics card, fans on the frame, you know, whatever it may be. And those things don't go bad often. You know, a riser going bad is kind of rare. Although when you have 191 cards running, you know, a 10.6 giga hash mining farm, the odds may be small that something might go wrong. But on a scale this size, um, those small odds do add up and we do have things, you know, weekly that become issues. So those are the main issues that we do run into um, while operating a mining farm like this. And having such a diverse you know, group of cards requires a lot of research and a lot of time uh, to see what is most profitable, especially like I said, um, again, the LHR unlocks, the R modes, the new miners, everything like that. It does take quite a lot of time. So talking about time, that leads me into the next topic, which are uh, what we believe to be the must-haves. Now, I did just reboot one of these rigs real quick uh, while I'm on the dashboard, but um, this dashboard is what we would you know, classify as a must-have when you know, managing multiple rigs. We started mining on Windows, and then we went to um, EthOS, and then we went to Hive, and now we finally ended up on Minerstat. And trying to control multiple rigs that are running Windows that aren't on a dashboard system like this would be a complete nightmare. It is already hard enough and time-consuming enough to do it on a dashboard like this. So the first must-have we would say would be a Linux distribution system like Minerstat or Hive OS or Simple Mining. It makes managing this a lot easier. The second would be, of course, uh, the electricity needed. We did switch um, a lot of our mining rigs from 120 to 240, and that allowed us a lot more electricity uh, to keep more rigs in one area and to not burn up outlets and everything like that. Uh, switching to 240 uh, when you're scaling is, I would say, the first thing that you should do. If you're to the point where you have a couple of these in your house, if you want to take the next step, I would say get a 240 volt outlet installed in your garage or your shed or wherever and connect a PDU up to that and then start from there. So the next thing also that I like to do uh, while managing it a mining farm of this size is I like to keep track of everything and keeping track of everything by what I mean by that is keeping track of what your you know equipment is when we started mining in 2016 2017 we had about two or three rigs and it was like oh you know the the Nvidia one is down can you reset it or um you know let me remote into the AMD you know 480 rig and reset it you kind of always knew what you had, but, you know, having a mining farm with, you know, 190 some cards, you kind of forget what is what. And so that's why we always create a list here. You can see the green ones are NVIDIA, the red ones are AMD. And every time that we put a new card into the mining bunker, we have it mining, we update this chart. It also allows us to know, of course, how many cards we have, how many are NVIDIA, how many are AMD. You can see here 59% of our farm is NVIDIA, 42% is AMD. And of course, we also like to keep you know pricing on this, seeing what our equipment is worth. And when we didn't keep track of this, it was very difficult to know what we had. Um, it kind of was difficult to know where we were going, which cards we should add, which ones we shouldn't add. And so kind of having a list like this does help us out a lot. So talking about um, adding cards and everything like that, that's going to lead us into our last part, which I'm going to talk a little bit about. Um, that's going to be our future plans for our mining bunker. Now, what we have done since 2016 is we have always kind of approached mining in the idea that we're going to roll our profits into more cards and more equipment. And that is what we have been doing um, from, you know, like I said, 2016, 2017. Now, what we used to do um, is we would buy one card with mining proceeds, meaning, you know, we'd mine for, I think, 
um, I'll use the Radeon 7s as an example, we would mine for two months, take the profits from those two months, and buy one single Radeon 7 at six to $650. Then we would have a mining farm with one more card making more money and then hopefully it would take us a couple days less you know, in the month to be able to afford the next one and so on and so on. However, with a farm this size, it's not practical to buy one card at a time and put it in. So what we do now is we plan a build and I'll kind of walk you through how we expand. I'll use um, this right here. This is a Gigabyte RTX 3080 LHR. Now this card is $799.99. It's a great price and you get $30 off. And I do believe that 3080s are going to be our next build that we do. So let me just kind of run it around for you guys right here. So we'll do $800 to make it even. We will subtract out 30, which is 770. We'll add tax back in. That brings it to 824 per card. Now, if we switch back over to what to mine, that's uh, 182. We'll just average that out. So what we are going to be doing is we're going to be adding eight of these RTX 3080s into our brand new GPU Risers R8 mining server case. So that means we're going to have to buy eight of these, which comes out to $6,591.02. Or I'm sorry, $6,591.20. We're going to divide that by how much we make per day. And that is $182 per day, which brings us to 36 days, 0.21. So rounding that to just say 37 days. What we'll normally do is save up for this however many days it takes and then purchase the cards and then put it into a new rig. However, we haven't purchased cards for a while. I want to say it's probably been about 36 days. I mean, we might have bought a 3060 Ti here or there, um, but nothing major. We haven't done a new build in a while. And by a while, I mean a couple months. We've been, you know, just like you guys, we're kind of obsessed with this. So we kind of, instead of saving up for 37 days, we'll kind of go back 37 days um, and kind of analyze it like that. So that is kind of our plan for expansion right now. Um, in the mining bunker, we have about 4,000 watts left. We really don't have a whole lot of room. It is getting hot. We're in sunny South Florida. But that said, um, you know, it is the middle of summer right now. Uh, I do think it's going to get a little hotter here in Florida, uh, probably over the next two months. Uh, but then it'll start to cool down again. And we are actually looking in, you know, alternative um, places to be able to store these. And I can tell you after mining in Florida since 2016, 2017, that um, the next facility that we get is definitely going to be up north. So kind of circling back to what our plans are going forward. Um, you know, I did mention that we are looking to expand, but we can't expand a whole lot here in the mining bunker. So we are looking at some alternative options. Now, when you live up north, and I'm sure, you know, some people watching this uh, do this, you can have a rig in each room and it would heat the house by itself. You can even put a good amount, maybe a 30 amp breaker in the basement and have a PDU down there and, you know, have, you know, 5,400 watts continuous running, which would heat the whole house. And then during the summer months, you can simply vent it out like we do in Florida year round. But then you wouldn't have to pay for heat to heat the home or heat the warehouse or wherever it may be. And that is kind of our plan going forward. And to end on future plans to get a place up north or something like that we will want to kind of fill that area with the most rock solid cards that we can now when you get to a size this large and i'm not saying we're you know large by any standard but to us 10 giga hash is fairly large and we are still growing but we have kind of changed our attitude towards a couple things and in the future we want to deploy the most efficient cards but also the cards that give us the least headache now there are cards on here like the 3060 ti lhr i don't think we'll do another build with those um constant issues and I'm sure miners will get better and everything like that, but we just want cards that you turn on and they work. And we are very happy with the RX 6700 XT, so we will be buying more of those. And we will be buying more full hash rate cards, which of course the AIBs don't have. So once those become available, I do believe we will be buying a good amount of the RTX 3070s. Now, those are all going to be Founders Editions, and those are all going to need to be repadded. But once those cards are repadded, they will be rock solid. All of our full hash rate cards, we honestly don't have to touch at all. Now, we reboot uh, rigs randomly. You'll see some in here that are an hour, um, you know, and stuff like that. But there's some rigs in here that have been running for quite some time. Now, here's one called uh, Photo Rig. Um, that's because this rig was um, actually placed next to some camera equipment and stuff like that. And this one has all RTX 3070s in there, and this rig has been running for 80 days, 19 hours. 
Now, normally I reset this. I should have reset this a while ago, but I just want to see how long this can go without me touching it. Now, there are a couple in here while I've been filming that I reset because I, I haven't looked at the dashboard today yet. And you can see any any rig with LHRs, I have to reset every couple of hours. And I can add a watchdog in there, and I, I really should, but I haven't done that yet. But our future plans will definitely uh, be with cards that we don't really have to touch. So that includes full hash rate cards, the Founder Edition cards. Um, that also might include some 5700 XTs if the prices on those um, stay where they're at. And also the 6700 XTs. Those are just rock solid cards. But that said, guys, that is how uh, we are doing it here. We don't really take out any credit or anything like that to buy cards. We only buy cards and we have only bought cards with money that we have got from crypto mining. So we are not expanding as much as other people are. We might not have gotten started as quick. You know, if we took out a huge line of credit and started mining in, you know, 2018, 2019, and really, you know, blew up the mining farm to get 10 giga hash, we probably would have, not probably, we definitely would have been able to pay all of that back and some. But we like to play everything kind of safe. You know, everyone has their own risk tolerance. But that said, guys, let me know how you guys like this video. I know it's not like a normal video that we do. Uh, maybe I'll just keep doing updates maybe once a month on how the overall mining farm is doing and what we built that month and what we're doing. But other than that, guys, I'm not going to make this too long. Um, I hope everyone watching this has a great rest of their day, and we'll see you guys next time.